It hits the fan, comes in many ways. It hits a lot of people. Last night there was huge storms, went through Mississippi, into Alabama and Tennessee, and they're now known, 23 dead, four people missing, and dozens injured from those storms. The town of Rolling Fork, uh, Mississippi, which had a population of 1,776, was utterly decimated. That town was wiped off the map. People don't recover from stuff like this very well. Uh, that town's going to have long scars in it, especially the people that lost. And all these people that were lost, uh, I, we had one person lost in Alabama and Morgan County. But most of the damage was done in Mississippi for these storms due to the time that they came through. The later you go with these storms, the energy from the sun dies down and they're less intense. Uh, we had storms, there was a tornado reported up around Fayetteville, Tennessee. I don't know that it did any damage. Uh, but, you know, there was damage done, especially in the western counties of Alabama, mainly Mississippi. Mississippi got hit real hard. And uh, these scars are going, like I said, they, they won't recover some of these communities. And uh, uh, it, they will rebuild maybe over time. But it takes a lot of time to rebuild from a storm like that. And there will always be signs of what happened before. And so this is things that we have to be prepared for. I'm Greg Allison with Green Gregs. I'm just here to tell you about preparation and getting ready for these tough times because they come in many forms. We got, you know, the doomsday prepping, which we prep for the end of the world. But, you know, when something like that happens, that is your end of the world. That's your end of the world event. You got to be ready in whatever way you can. And for things like that, it's mainly keeping your eyes wide open and head on a swivel, which I tell you, because you need to know where to, to uh, hunker down or get out. Hunker down or just flee. Sometimes you live in places where you can't hunker down. And that's what's behind me here. I'm at a site where a house was destroyed 12 years ago. In a community that was destroyed 12 years ago. Most of this community has rebuilt. But the, uh, I'm just, driving through here, I just counted six slabs like the one behind me. Let me get up. I've been crouched down here because it's windy and I know it's going to make racket in the microphone. So let me stand up so maybe it won't, maybe it won't be too bad. You can see this slab right here. This is one of six in this community. And there's a couple other lots that are all grown up and, and another lot or two that's got dirt where they probably once had a slab. Maybe they're getting prepared to build another building there. This is a high priced community. And uh, Madison County, any building lot is premium. This would fetch a lot of money. This lot is probably worth thirty or $40,000. And yet no one is building on it. Houses are going up here, popping up everywhere over this county. The fact that this stays vacant, and there's so many vacant ones still, 12 years later here, is tragic. Ever, if you're in a house like this, and this is what happens, you don't survive, I and mean, there's nowhere to go. If your entire house gets cleaned off to the slab, your chances of survival are just about non-existent. I believe this community itself lost maybe 23 or 4 people in it. This very community that I'm in right now lost a lot of people. And uh, 27 April, 2011. My worms came the day before, 26 April, 2011. You can see the kind of houses here. Pardon the wind noise. This is a little cul-de-sac here. All around this community, there's slabs. And you know, just two years ago, there were a whole lot more slabs. I mean, there were dozens in here just a couple of years ago. Even a year ago, there was quite a few more slabs. But the lots are in high demand. You can see these houses have just been built. A lot of this stuff has just been refurbished, replaced. It's taken a long time. Now families where the entire family was wiped out, I'm sure the estate was liquidated and sold off by somebody and reacquired and probably by some property manager and would have been sold for housing development pretty fast. Maybe this is a sign of a hopeful dream. Maybe somebody is hoping one day they can have the money to rebuild. It's been a dozen years. What's happening here? What's their story? Every slab is a story of tragedy. It's a story of great loss where it hit the fan for somebody. I pull this camera down. It's so noisy. And that, I'm sure. No, I can't put a sock on the window this, end of this camera or even a fuzzball because there's no the microphone is recessed. But guys, this is what we're looking at. It is um, a sad story. It, it makes you think. If this don't make you think, what does? Just let it soak in for a minute. I mean, guys, this is why you prepare. This is why we get ready. Myself, last night, we had these storms rolling through. I don't have 
really ain't hard to run in my house either. Internal, like an interior room, that's what they tell you for low level storms, but for an EF5, interior room ain't gonna do you no good. Nothing's gonna help. If you got a storm, I've seen, there's a mansion here close by that in 20, 20, uh, 1995 got the same treatment. I mean, it was a bigger house than any of these. And it looked like this. They rebuilt there completely, which means the owners weren't at home probably. And just uh, 1993, though, 1995, that same storm took up that mansion, passed up here just a couple hundred yards up, right through the bottom, at the base of that hill, and mowed down a wide lane of trees like a gigantic lawnmower. I mean, it mowed the trees flat down on top, on it, just toward the bottom of that hill right there. So this area has been hit twice by storms. I mean, living around here is kind of like playing Russian roulette with severe st storms, guys. And last night I had my head on so because I wanted to know if I was going to have anything like an EF-5. It would tell me that I had to leave my house. And I was going to have to know that I'd flee north or south. And I got a buddy on my channel, and you might see him a lot, Chewy Weather. He helps keep me advised of stuff like that. He does sell subscriptions for keeping people advised, guys. But he, uh, this is what you got to watch out for. And, you know, we, we'll have a few more of these here in the spring. You know, we're not done with tornado season. For spring and fall is the worst around here just because the winter and the summer start fighting each other. Hot air and cold air clash when fronts come through. But, guys, if you, if you find a, I know you a, a Ryan, let's see, what's his uh, name? Ryan Yall, <laughs> that other uh, channel on YouTube that does weather reporting, anything I'm talking about. Ryan Hall, y'all. He, uh, He's raising money to help the people from the storms in Mississippi. I looked on his, I looked on his YouTube channel. I did not see the link to it. If it was, I called it out. But you can, I can find it there. He's trying to help the people there. If y'all can find a way, those people need a lot of help. If you're local to the area, go help them out. I don't know what happened here. This is a sad story, and there's several other really sad stories here. There were many sad stories. This community alone probably lost. I think it's 24 people right here in this in this very community back in. Uh, we had a heck of a spate of storms came through. Worst I've seen since I was a kid, 2014, no, excuse me, 1974 and 2011, there were just storms. The ones in 2011 was like all day long. They started in the morning, went all day. I hid at the basement of Marshall Space Lights and I went and got my daughter from school and we hid out. And I had a hard time getting home that night because roads were closed, uh, there was debris strewn everywhere, it was a mess. And I was almost out of gas. I thought I might not make it home. I thought I might have to camp out in my pickup truck ahead of the time in the camper in the back. I wasn't sure I could make it back home before I ran out of gas. <laughs> I just managed. Next day I went hunting generators. I had to go all the way to Bowling Green, Kentucky to find one. So why you got to get ready. Have your stuff. Even if you're not hit directly, your community can be greatly affected by power outages. We had power out for a week here. It would have been out longer, but the uh, Redstone Arsenal decided to do with that power to help the community recover sooner. They were closed for a month. Just to give you an idea. Sorry about the wind, guys. It is windy. This is the aftermath of a storm day. And so with that, I'm going to say just be ready. Be prepared. Do what you can. But be prepared and not scared. But, you know, it's a sad story for all those people in Mississippi. My heart goes out to them. Say prayers for them. They, they need to be in your prayers. And if you find any way you can help them, Go ahead and do that but guys yeah i had a storm hit me and destroyed my greenhouses y'all remember just a couple weeks ago and so I'm, I'm dealing with that right now uh but we'll do what we can and uh, like i said i've got a lot of decisions i got to make in my own life but that's just the way it is guys so take care of yourselves eyes wide open head on the swivel don't ever forget that but i'm gonna say thank you for watching and greg out